we're going to be observing and exploring crickets. In this segment, Barbara Hollenbeck, a fourth grade teacher at Carrick Elementary in Louisville, Kentucky, facilitates a science lesson in which her students classify crickets as insects. Barbara aligns her lesson with Common Core ELA standards Speaking and Listening 4.1, Writing 4.8, and Writing 4.10. We are beginning to do the food chain. We have explored soil, we have explored uh, plants and seeds, and we have, we're creating our own terrarium. We have been studying soil and plants. Barbara's morning message invites students to review and discuss the life science concepts they've been learning about. What is the process that we have we were exploring yesterday and we set setting up experiments for? Jaquan. Photosynthesis. Today, the students explore new concepts as they add crickets to their terrariums. Wow! A real live cricket. I want you to uh, think about and I want you to talk to your to your partner, to your buddy that's next to you, and I want you to decide whether or not you think that a cricket is an insect. They're going to be using process skills, which is part of the standards, and the process skills they'll be using are observing, they're going to be recording, they're going to be classifying. It's a real live cricket. Experience with these process skills contributes towards students' mastery of the standards targeted in this lesson. Did you? Okay. All right. Kids are natural scientists. And they want to, they're, they're wondering these things. What, you know, uh, what does it eat? Where does it go? What's going to happen when I do this? So it's just a very engaging thing. As you notice, the cricket ain't saying nothing. It's silent. Yeah? It's a male. It's a female. No. Male's a boy. Okay. What did you decide is a cricket an insect? And be ready to tell me why. Okay. Isabel? A cricket's not an insect because insects, most insects have six legs and crickets only have four. Okay, okay. So you think it only has four. Does, uh, does anyone want to add to what Isabel is, is saying? I don't agree with Isabel because uh, the, uh, the cricket do, the cricket does, does, have, ha six yeah, does have six legs and an uh, insect has an uh, actimal Actinum, thorax, and a head with Good feedback. They have to learn to um, uh, share ideas with one another, to disagree with one another, and they did. They did some some disagreeing a, a little bit. Big um, back legs in there, and those are also legs, but they use them for jumping. Through their discussion in groups and as a class, Barbara's students progress towards speaking and listening standard 4.1 by building on others' ideas and clearly expressing their own. They now move to the hypothesis testing phase of the activity by gathering and recording evidence of the cricket's anatomy. I like the way you're starting your drawing. Oh, wonderful. Don't forget to label each part. Yeah, I know why. Ah, I like the way you're using your chart. Good job. Name the parts for me. In drawing and writing about the crickets, Barbara's students gather evidence from their own observations and from a chart describing the characteristics of insects. Paint a picture with words. That's described. That's right. Their work gives them experience with learning targets and writing standards 4.8 and 4.10 and prepares them to present their conclusions to the class. I think it's an insect because it has six legs, three body parts, and four antennas. I know that because I took a magnifying glass and looked at it real close. Now you've told me that this is an insect and you told me why. You told me that it had three body parts. What was one of the body parts that you noticed? Skylar, can you identify another body part we haven't mentioned? We've said the head and the thorax. We've said the wings and the antenna. The um, bondman. 
The abdomen, okay, the abdomen, good job. So I want you to observe what happens when you just gently touch the antenna. You're not gonna stab it. You're just gonna gently touch that antenna. Their observations of the crickets have prepared students for two simple experiments. One involves gently touching the antennae with a pencil eraser and recording the cricket's response. You squished it, Brian! In the second experiment, students place a tent-shaped piece of paper in the container with the cricket. Okay, well just keep watching it. No, no, honey, don't you don't don't shake it. Don't shake it inside. The students predict how the cricket will respond to the tent, then observe and compare their predictions to its behavior. Please write down your observations. Be ready to share. Remember, when you're writing detail, you're painting a picture with words. After recording details from each experiment, students volunteer and call on each other to share their findings with the class. He was going through the holes and, it, and he's climbing all over it. And he touched it with his antenna and he got scared. For the lesson's final observation activity, students put the crickets into their terrariums and observe and record their responses to the new environment. If you are a materials manager, please bring the terrariums over to me. I put it in your... After putting away the terrariums, students sit down together for a pair share of what they learned in the lesson. I think the was trying to lay down the Maybe it was like sleepy because it maybe was tired because it was eating too much grass. The final discussion gives students further opportunity to use their new knowledge. It also gives Barbara another opportunity to monitor individual progress and encourage verbal expression. One was digging a hole to make to make its home, and the other one was exploring around the terrarium. Okay, okay. Um, pick someone who wants to share. Melissa. Marguerite did almost the same exact thing, just you didn't dig. Didn't dig, okay. So what, tell me in your, your own words, what did it do? It, uh, it hopped around on grass. Okay. And when he got on the hill, he hopped down. It was kind of funny. I think um, they did very well with their discussions and working well in small groups. And um, uh, they were successful in determining that it is an actual insect. It got an actinum, thorax, and a head, six legs. I was impressed with some of the terminology they already had. I said he must have been camouflaging himself because uh, because of the predators. Uh, which makes it easier in transitioning to the uh, concepts I'm trying to teach. And uh, it also gives me feedback as to where I need to go from here in making sure that they understand the contribution that, that this insect is going to have within their uh, terrarium, within their little habitat. And that's what they're going to see with each addition of a living organism and how they react to one another. We have begun our food chain, and we're going to continue it tomorrow. I'm gonna to give you a word to think about, and it may be a word you've heard before, it may not be, and that word is decomposer.